Welcome to Call of Duty Vanguard. Diversity. Broken servers. Diversity. Camping. Diversity. Hobbits. Diversity. Empty servers. Diversity. 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 Welcome to World War Woke. All too frequently, AAA publishers like to compete with each other to see which one can utterly destroy its best and most beloved franchise, and 2021 is proving to be an excellent year for such shenanigans. Joining the ranks of EA, Bethesda and Ubisoft, Activision has shouted, hold my beer, and strive to annihilate its own credibility and the Call of Duty franchise. This is, without doubt, Activision's Battlefield Vagina moment. They have decided to dial the in-game politics up to 11 whilst kicking the quality control completely off of the stage. Please note, I have completed the campaign, which probably qualifies as masochism. I have prestiged once in online multiplayer and spent a small amount of time testing out zombies, which was basically just asset flipped multiplayer maps and the most low effort zombie mode to date. I am dreadfully horrible at first person shooters and a proud inveterate hardcore camper. Think what you like, but I never AFK, I don't cheat, unlike one third of all Call of Duty players according to recent polls, and frankly my dear, I paid for this game, so I have every right to camp in the corridors and pump RPGs through doorways. Especially since I like lying down in video games and running around just seems like too much effort if you ask me. Spoiler warning, this video game has a very very shitty plot indeed, shitty characters and an even shittier political message. There is no way I can fully explore the full scope of this game's shitness without spoiling certain aspects of the plot. But take heart, the entire game isn't worth playing anyway, so frankly, the harm I can do is severely constrained by the inherent deficiencies in this product. A brief history of the Call of Duty franchise. The story of Call of Duty is an all too familiar tale of how franchises degenerate and go into decline precisely because of the way the mainstream video game industry has declined and become degenerate. It all started so brilliantly back in 2003 with the OG Call of Duty and for over a decade the franchise was a mainstay of world class top shelf first person shooters and pretty much set the standard for the industry. The formula was simple, make a brilliant game and make lots of money. Both gamers and publishers were all collectively happier than pigs in shit. Naturally over the last 10 years or so the emphasis changed right across the industry. Instead of being about competing in the marketplace by making a better product, it's progressively become about making the game as cheaply as is humanly possible, monetizing the living shit out of every single nook and cranny of the game, bombarding the audience with advertising campaigns, pivoting towards insidious wokery, and blanket bombing the players with monetization. I am not going to go into fine detail here, because with 19 mainstream games, multiple spin-offs for handhelds and mobile, that's our fucking PhD thesis right there. 
And that's before anyone gets into a debate about which title marks the defining moment when the franchise went into decline. But I personally think that it is not controversial to say that Call of Duty World War II was a fairly clear example of post-peak Call of Duty. By this time, the franchise was very literally apple-bobbing in the toilet bowl of greed, desperately pushing its shameless face into the faecal slurry in an attempt to bite that last dollar bill tucked up behind the U-Bend. Players stood around on the Normandy beaches, at the site where tens of thousands of soldiers lost their lives, chilling out online in social spaces, where their purchased loot boxes would parachute out of the sky to be opened in front of other players to create loot envy. Because nothing goes together better than kiddie gambling and mass slaughter. In fact, maybe on an ethical dimension, perhaps they do go together well. But I digress. It also had black Nazis because of diversity and marketing reasons. Because they wanted players to identify with their avatars. Because that's how the fucked up minds of marketeers work. They are totally down with the whole idea of making lols with Nazis to help people with black skin identify with their character's skin, whilst conveniently shrugging off the fact they're also now identifying with their Nazi uniform. And on top of all this sick and abhorrent marketing amorality, the game itself was a bit shit. I don't think anyone would dispute that Call of Duty was brilliant, Call of Duty World War II was shitty, and Call of Duty Vanguard may well mark the end of any credibility this franchise still has. I will leave it to you to discuss where the precise trajectory lies and which games marked the precise tipping point in their decline. But one thing is of note, Vanguard has taken the notable step of completely taking the knee embrace the current paradigm of make up the facts as you go along social media politics, abandon historical accuracy, integrity and its own fan base, then decided to bash itself on the head with the stupid hammer by additionally ensuring it produced the absolutely most functionally shite video game possible to boot with the most astonishing levels of wokery. I shit you not. But first, let's discuss just how much of a technically bad state this game is currently in. Functionality and fuckery. Vanguard is the worst functioning Call of Duty release I have ever played. So let's quickfire some of the fuckery experienced. The game comes with a 38 page end user license agreement and a 36 page privacy contract. If you are a first year law student, deciphering that fucker to a 100% degree of understanding is probably over a term's work right there. The always online live service interface is fucked. It's like it has a life of its own. You log in and try and play, you can queue, but the loadouts are locked for a minute or two whilst the game warms up, I guess. After each match, the UI likes to show you stuff sometimes overriding your own menu selection, sometimes switching you to things you didn't click on, sometimes you click on one thing and the UI is so sluggish it takes you somewhere else. Basically, after each match, you pretty much just have to let the UI biff out for 30 seconds until it becomes semi-usable again. They also haven't fixed the vibe suck chat notifications. I've tried everything at this point and have all notifications switched off across the board. Yet relentlessly, in the middle of the campaign, invariably at some cutscene dramatic moment, I will see the words, But Destroyer 666 has come online, flash up in the chat box. This has been a problem for fucking years. Something is balked between the Blizzard client and the game itself on PC, because this seems hard coded. I guess someone might have thought about fixing this? But I guess they were too busy posting on Twitter about why Carl Rittenhouse doesn't deserve a fair trial or reading up on critical race theory before the next creative meeting. Talking about vibe killing, what the fuck is up with the cursor in Vanguard? This is something that should have been obvious in testing had they done any testing, but the game keeps insisting on resetting your big fat cursor 
to the centre of the screen, and slapping it up there at every inconvenient opportunity. Tense cutscene of an interrogation? Slap a big fat cursor on the woman's nose. MVP post-match cut visuals? Go on, slap another cursor in the middle of the action. On the incredibly rare occasion that anything remotely dramatic or exciting happened by way of cinematics, you could rely on the magical moment being ruined by having your new little hanger-on friend, the Fat Cursor, pop up and wave at your mind's eye and shout, Look at me! Look at me! I'm still here! I'm an annoying fucking cursor! I probably spent more time moving that fucking cursor out of the way than enjoying the actual game. In fact, the game of moving the cursor off the screen, I will begrudgingly acknowledge was more fun than some of Vanguard's deliberate content. The spawns in multiplayer were a painstakingly crafted and finely tuned shit show. I'm talking random spawn switching, no consideration to what's going on, where the enemy players are. They just picked random spots on the map and randomly spawn you there a lot of the time. I have spawned in front of groups of enemies, in their spawn point. I have been spawned into gunfire, petrol bombs and explosions. I have spawned behind the enemy spawn point. Although to be honest most of my best kills have involved me spawning behind the enemy team and shooting the poor oblivious pilgrims in the back, but that's another story. It's not uncommon to have runs of instant spawn deaths that last 5, 6 or 7 consecutive deaths in a row literally spawn into instant death. It is also without doubt the most unstable Call of Duty I've ever played. For all its multitude of sins, Call of Duty is reliably professional in the way it runs. But not this time. It got slightly better in the last few days but most of the time I've played has been cursed by routine crashes and I've had to scan and repair three times. There are huge issues with game mechanics. The shield appears to be bugged, so in small maps like Das House, you just encounter armies of fucktards with shields on their backs. Now when I've tried to use a shield properly, I've been one-shotted from the front by someone with a pump shotgun, but sling that fucker on your back and keep running around and it's like someone has tripled your hit points and hidden your hitbox. Can't really blame people for doing it. Similarly, shotguns are insane and right now are an eye win button. On top of this there are loads of head glitching spots. Again on Das House there is a spot where people just throw up a mobile barrier, climb on it and shoot through a tiny gap head glitching. I can just about kill them half the time and I'm an expert camper. On top of all of this the netcode, general state and latency of the servers is tragic. So anyone running around with a one shot one kill OP weapon will always win a trade at close quarters. I'm usually rolling with a two shot kill weapon and frankly I'm getting fucking tired of shooting someone four to six times, dying and then watching the kill cam explain to me that I only hit them once. And it doesn't help that it keeps matchmaking me into lobbies that routinely have 90 plus millisecond ping. That's nearly in fucking Russia. The multiplayer game runs like a fucked cat and there is no hiding it. And whilst I know there's ways to game the system, it's just not my style. I might be a camping fuck but I have my standards, as stunted and as limited in scope as they are. I'm not going to use exploits or cheeses on other players. Sure I will camp, like a tramp in a doorway, but that's my right. But I'm not putting up barriers and climbing on them just to make myself unhittable. Besides, sounds like too much effort to be honest. I had huge issues with the colour palette in the campaign and less so multiplayer. I'm not quite sure what's going on with their choices of colour but in lots of areas I struggled to pick out targets from the background. Everything was this kind of brownish greenish smear. The Das House playlist was broken. After the first match it would always take me to a different map until I turned off crossplay which fixed it. No explanation, no tooltips, no warning, just didn't fucking work, like so much of this game. When I unlock a new weapon attachment and select it, 
It still flags with a green diamond, notifying me that I haven't noticed it yet. So I have to both select it and then wiggle my fucking mouse up and down over it just to prove to the game I've noticed it. It's constantly updating fucking shader packs. I'm talking obsessively. And then still gives me shader pack warnings throughout the fucking campaign. Forget getting immersed in the shit story. If the cursor isn't popping up in the middle of the screen for a chat, I have a red shader warning blinking at me out of the corner of my eye. Sometimes it just locks my loadout options and sticks a little padlock on it. Probably something to do with not syncing with their digital store. The game is a clunky jumbled mess. And don't get me started about the patches, updates, playlist updates. It's like the game seems to see me playing as some kind of inconvenience as it focuses on the really important job of staying up to date, reloading shaders, updating the shop and crashing on time. Seriously, one session I started playing, it wouldn't launch. It made me fill out a bug request form, then I relaunched it, then it required an update. When that was done, it finally started. It told me it needed to update my shader pack or some shit. I'd sit there like a good little doggy for another 10 minutes, and then when it's finally done, it tells me that this requires a restart. I restart it, and now it starts compiling my shaders. All over again. And just to make sure there was enough piss in the beer, it then shortly afterwards crashed, restarting the whole process and telling me I had to do it all over again from the beginning. Now this isn't a game I've just installed, I've been playing it all week. It shouldn't take me 30 minutes filling in a form and a large mouthful of fuck around to just turn it on. That is a lot of effort and hard work just to launch an application. And let's be honest here, it's not really worth the effort. Vanguard was not in a fit state for release. Naturally, they're gating progress as hard as they can. Ridiculous challenges on the weapon skins, so you have to install three specific mods, then get 100 specific types of kills with those three mods attached. These are late stage achievements, so they don't overlap with much else. Then you have to do it with three other mods and 100 types of specific kills. XP is slow. Everything is just stretched out like watered down soup to drag out time played. And this is before season one microtransactions launch and they unchain all the totally psychotic monetization specialists and unleash them on the player base. As a footnote, cheating is now the new normal. Seriously, there appears to be zero effort in moderating or addressing the hacking issue. I will let you be the judge, but I've seen no scoping bolt action sniper rifle users dominate close quarters maps with the finesse and precision of Neo from the fucking Matrix. People ain't even hiding it these days. They don't seem to need to. You see people vectoring in towards you in kill cam, constantly pre-targeting you through walls and with their itchy finger constantly tapping on that snap to shoot button. Look, no, nobody cares about the cheating anymore. Well, the publishers don't care. Recent polls show about a third of the Call of Duty community are cheating these days, so accept the fact. I might be shit at video games, but I'm a death lord when it comes to camping. Some pricks just knew where I was. No perks, no prior notice, just a quick tell with their pre-targeting and they jumped in guns blazing on my position. I might be old, slow, incapable, curmudgeonly and very, very drunk, but I know how to camp and I know when someone magically knows where I am. The golden rule is, if you're camping and you've killed someone, the next guy might know you're there. Fuck, they might come back to teach you a lesson, but if you're in an obscure spot for the first time, you have every right to be suspicious when you get wall banged from across the map by a dude with a submachine gun running at top score. Between the cheating, the server latency, the bad netcode and the broken guns and equipment, the multiplayer is a miserable experience before you even get to the utterly woke operators. When you put 8 rounds into some dude with a 2 shot kill weapon then watch the kill cam of him running towards you, jumping, not getting hit at all and killing you, it's frankly time to go and play something else. Talking of woke, this game is so blisteringly woke, it could curdle milk. They have now introduced a text filter on your own loadouts. Literally, just using the word TARD 
we'll get it blocked. They even blocked felching, which is pretty obscure. Fisting, fingering, pedo, circumcision and George Floyd also got banned. And nobody is going to see these. These are your loadout labels in your UI. You can't even say rude things in private anymore. Whoever compiles these lists has a pretty pathetic and sad existence. I guess you could say that people who run tests on those words do too, but I sleep soundly enough at night. Fortunately, however, the following terms were acceptable. White privilege, get woke go broke, and Antifa. Strangely, so was Cosby Suite. Seriously, this is some hardcore deliberate CRT woke shit. Black pride is allowed, white pride was not. It is safe to say that whoever came up with this list had an agenda. An agenda that seems to think politics in video games is okay if the person supports Antifa, Black Lives Matter or critical race theory. Run some tests on the words yourself because it's painfully obvious that they brought in some high-ranking officers from the Ministry of Right Think to make sure, as they say, we all get the message. <laughs> well, I always like a challenge, so I did try to see what I could get past the filters. My personal favourites were finger bashing, rectal prolapse, and I found the following one particularly charming, blow bang apocalypse. Obviously, Blowbang Holocaust was banned in the interests of good taste. Credit where credit is due, mind. They have a function that just let me import all my settings and key bindings from the previous Call of Duty game. I shit you not, I was actually grumbling about the fact I was going to have to reconfigure Vanguard, and I quote, Just like every fucking year, why can't I just carry over my settings? So well done Activision, you did something right. Activision did one thing right in this whole damn game. So what about the PvP? Well, I've said most of what needs to be said really. It's a fucking mess. Thrown out into the marketplace with the attitude of, well, we've got a year to fix it. It's now become a yearly ritual for all the Call of Duty content creators to make videos in the first few weeks of launch along the lines of top 10 fixes for multiplayer and the like. It's a polite way of them to say, dear fucking lord, it's broken this year too. Also, I have to ask, what is up with the voting thing for MVP? Is this some new system or an old one reinstated? Personally, I don't care. It's shit. I always lose the vote. I'm sorry, but there is no place for democracy in a competition. The person wins if they do enough, or they lose if they don't. You don't have a little vote afterwards to soothe people's fee-fees. Imagine if it was an exam. Little Billy came top in the test, but we had a little vote amongst the class and decided to give top place to someone else because feelings. Fuck off. The wokeness and ludicrousness of the game really goes to town in the multiplayer. It's pretty ridiculous in the campaign, but it goes full retard in the multiplayer. At launch, the only playable operators are woke, representative, stunning and brave. You can play from a whole selection of crack female frontline troops from all around the world. You can even be a white German turncoat or even a Japanese Asian turncoat. You can be all types of bitter female protagonist. But sadly, as the first of a long list of reverse racist critical race theory motivated snubs against the British, there are no British operatives. Which is a bit strange considering we had 3 million soldiers fighting in the war, with 570,000 injured. But no, in their infinite wisdom, Activision has decided to write the British out of World War II, and instead, the closest we get is a rich kid from Cameroon. Yes, that's right kids, you can be a German, Russian, Australian, Japanese, French, Dutch, Indian, Luxembourgian, but apparently the British were not in World War II, so you will just have to play as a dude from Cameroon. I found this odd, considering that the last time I read a history book that hadn't been burnt by fascists, it said the British literally fucking started World War II. 
and before anyone wigs out and has some kind of your wasist woke re-out at me, Sergeant Arthur Kingsley is not British. It's a deliberate snub. And I read his bio. He's a rich kid from Cameroon who was educated at Oxford and joined the British Armed Forces. He's a posh kid who was educated abroad, which is slightly strange considering the Douala region he purports to be from was a tribal fishing region at the time, which was only just recovering from German occupation up to the end of the First World War. He's one of the one percenters. So basically, his super rich parents either got rich under German occupation, rich under British occupation, or he was just some kind of thief. Because the Cameroons repeatedly defied attempts to be ruled and wanted independence. Maybe his dad was just the Jeff Bezos of the Cameroonian fishing village economy. The character is ridiculous. Activision and Sledgehammer went out of their way to make a deliberate point here about race by not having a British multiplayer operator. It's a trap. It's a trap set up to make people say, what the fuck? You can't play as the British in a fucking World War II video game. And the woke horde, shill content creators and sponsored social media idiots will be ready to pounce on anyone pointing out this insidious move and shout, you're racist because you're upset that you can't play as a white British soldier even though he's actually Cameroonian. Just saying. Well, trust me, there is a lot of racism going on here, and the perpetrators are Activision and Sledgehammer Games. The character of Sergeant Arthur Kingsley is 100% pure race baiting. It is a situation deliberately contrived to spark protestations about racial representation in video games. It's a scenario where the producers of the game want to position themselves as holding the moral high ground whilst positioning their critics as intolerant racists. But that's the thing about puffing your chest out, race baiting and whipping the crowd up into a frenzy. Nice people don't normally do that kind of thing and usually it leads to more hate being in the world, not less. It leads to more injustice in the world, not their vision of utopia. It's also incredibly embarrassing when the bullshit behind the moral posturing gets pointed out. And here is the fucking punchline. Sergeant Arthur Kingsley was inspired by a real soldier, Private Sidney Cornell from Plymouth. Cornell joined the Paras, was posted to the 7th Parachute Battalion and was dropped behind German lines during the Normandy invasions. Having a reputation for being as hard as nails, he was awarded the Distinguished Conduct Medal for his actions. He spent over a month running through mortar and machine gun fire, literally, as a runner, and also engaged in combat. He was injured four times, yet refused to be relieved to get medical treatment. His citation included the words, Space does not permit a record of all of his feats, as he distinguished himself in practically every action, and fighting took place daily. But fuck him, he doesn't support Sledgehammer Games' narrative, so let's make the guy some posh kid from Cameroon who got a private education at Oxford University instead. It's easier to sell that bullshit than the actual truth. That is what these self-serving scum lords are like. They are pretending to be woke. They are blackwashing a World War II video game, whilst whitewashing the real black soldier that served in the Normandy landings. Maybe they thought Private Sidney Cornell was too low rank, not educated enough, or too working class. Maybe they felt that having a character educated at Oxford would be easier to sell. Whatever their reasons, they're not pure of heart nor motivated by any genuine concern with telling authentic stories about the real black soldiers who served in the British Army in World War II. This is marketing. It shits on the legacy of black British soldiers and it's only done to race bait. I don't think that's a very honourable way to honour a soldier. Do you? Sergeant Arthur Kingsley is the Finn of the Call of Duty universe. He is a character designed to deliberately trigger reaction based on ethnicity so you can label your critics as racists preemptively. Because let's face it, 
Even I know that stormtroopers were all supposed to be clones of that big New Zealand fella. So naturally, everyone was going to react by saying, how the fuck can that stormtrooper dude be black? That's not motivated by racism. It's a trap because they knew damn well they were deviating from their own historical law. I have no skin in this game. I choose my friends and associates based on their character, not their race, background, political stances, fuck status or the contents of their underpants. I am merely noting that when corporations pull the race card, it's not because they give any shits about justice. They give shits about shareholders. Besides, I don't think Call of Duty has the credibility to damage the reputation of those who served in World War II, however much they impugn or misrepresent it. <laughs> they don't have the clout. The disintegration of the World War II narrative is a principal theme here. Seriously, this is a World War II game where they literally disintegrate and reassemble history into some kind of intersectional critical race theory bullshit narrative that would have us believe that a group of stunning and brave renegades literally won World War II single-handedly by being diverse and ignoring the white patriarchy. It's essentially Star Trek Discovery in space, only considerably less realistic. The multiplayer can best be described as shit. It's a glitchy woke exploiters and cheaters paradise with terrible spawns and even worse anti-cheat. My most enduring memory is constantly having to watch out for enemy players to spawn right behind me. In fact, maybe that's the best way to describe this shit house iteration of the PvP franchise. It's a really good way to get shot repeatedly in the back. It's basically like serving in the Afghan army. So yeah, if you like getting stoned out of your mind and like being shot in the fucking back before you've even figured out what the fuck is happening, then at least Call of Duty Vanguard excels at being an Afghan military simulator. The gun rant. To be honest, I was going to have an enormous rant about the state of the weapons, but fuck it. Suffice it to say, they're all pretty bad. And on this episode, we've nearly broken poor Jonathan with some of the most cursed customizations that Call of Duty Vanguard's multiplayer has to offer. God, I think this is a Garand. What have they done to you? All right, we'll pause there. There's just gonna be a lot of pained wincing going on, I think, in this review. Wow, where to start? A Browning. BAR M1918A2, you can tell from the magazine guides, even if all the other features have been altered by some sadistic maniac. I should qualify that 99% of my firearms knowledge comes from forgotten weapons and the holy grace that Gun Jesus bestows upon us all. For those of you who don't know who that is, Gun Jesus, aka Ian McCollum, is without doubt the most critically accomplished, expert, and knowledgeable, bearded, left handed firearms expert on the planet possibly the galaxy. But even as a humble keyboard warrior, I noted many issues with the weaponry that was problematic. To be fair, given the legacy of the franchise, everyone's modern day obsession with gun mods and the fact that Activision's entire psychometric manipulation strategy for monetization is entirely reliant on progression, they basically could not be realistic with the guns. What are they gonna do? Give you a Sten gun? and then after 5,000 kills, upgrade the wooden stock to a slightly worse but cheaper to make metal stock? That would be realistic. In fact, in World War II, most of the time guns and weapons were replaced with slightly inferior weapons that were cheaper to mass produce, or versions of existing weapons that were much cheaper to produce. That's gonna break your monetization strategy. Buy the new season pass and get the opportunity to grind for three months so we can take away your beloved Thompson submachine gun and replace it with this shitty grease gun. Okay, maybe not shitty, since they were still used by Abrams tanks crews right up to the Gulf War. I'm sure you get my point. So yes, you are fighting in World War II. Nevertheless, you have a full range of modern day optics and weapon mods, all made to look kind of steampunk. In fact, nearly all the weaponry ends up looking steampunk by the time you've unlocked all your preferred weapon mods, only combined with lurid multicoloured weapon skins to boot. Basically like someone did 
a steampunk Sesame Street mashup. Like I said, they needed weapon attachment based progression because it's central to the game, so I guess they tried their best to retain the mechanic and make the attachments look as oldie worldy as possible. There was some totally avoidable nonsense however, animations where someone uses their gun like a hammer and chisel, bashing their victim and slamming the fragile replacement 9mm magazine into their SMG was possibly the most stupid thing I've seen in a video game in a while. Stamp pressed metal magazines can stop feeding correctly if they just get a bit worn around the feed lips. I'm pretty sure using them like a fucking jackhammer and employing 200 plus pounds of force to ram them into the magazine well would reliably break them. Animations removing magazines without operating the release whilst doing kung fu was sillier than even I expected. Another animation where someone shoots across someone's legs with an SMG at close range just to set them up for more kung fu. Yeah, let's just accept that it's a modern day Call of Duty game made in the current era and accept the fact that a lot of the operator animations are probably more inspired by cosplay than combat. Let's just say much unnecessary racking of slides was done this day. I would note there is no Lee Enfield rifle in the multiplayer. I would just file that away under video game publishers hate the British now. There were a few annoying examples of anachronistic firearms practices. It all just got very tactical without being self-consciously aware that many modern firearms techniques are indeed modern. There are standard dogmas taught as recently as the 80s that we laugh about now. So think about the crazy shit they were doing in World War II. In this game, I saw a lot of very professional two-handed pistol shooting, no teacupping or shooting single-handed, when in reality, a lot of people used to shoot pistols in World War II like they were doing Olympic target shooting. Then again, fixing that shit would require more character animation. Ergo, cost. The injection of modern combat tactics into the franchise frankly just added to the hyper real steampunk bullshit historically revisioned sense of nonsense within the game. I mean, all the guns are balanced to fit PvP metrics and have very little to do with reality anyway, so frankly we shouldn't be so shocked that some hipster gun control zombie wrongly categorised the BAR as, and I quote, an assault rifle. The weapons animations weren't particularly bad, and the sounds were not bad either. It's 2021, and this is one of the longest running and most lucrative franchises on earth. You would assume they had worked this shit out by now, frankly. What can I say guys, it's Call of Duty, admittedly the most ridiculous one yet at that. You can rely on the guns to make bang bang noises, and look pretty. And that's about it. Frankly, given how much money this game has made Bobby Kotick, you'd think he could take a break from his busy schedule of making death threats to his personal assistant, threatening to destroy people complaining about sexual harassment by his pilot, and worrying about why his name was found in Jeffrey Epstein's Little Black Book, to spend a few hours making sure a bit more time and attention was spent on the current state of the franchise. The campaign was really the highlight of the whole experience for me. I frankly felt honoured to be in a position where I had the opportunity to experience such a truly dreadful butchering of history and the total disrespect of millions of combatants and civilians who died in the war. The complete blind insensitivity and lack of empathy is truly a wonder to behold. Imagine Ben and Jerry's setting up a stall at the Auschwitz-Birkenau State Museum and naming a selection of new ice cream flavours with funny Nazi based names. Minter Motherland, Ravensbrook Choo Choo, Krakow Doe. That should give you a rough idea of how fucking disrespectful Sledgehammer has been to everyone involved in World War II. They basically recrafted the story of World War II to service the agenda of a very particular identity based political perspective, letting all of us ignorant racist bigots know who really won the war. And you guessed it. It certainly wasn't the patriarchal mainstream allied forces. But it wasn't because of British commanders or mighty tanks. Today we march to the gates of hell. To defend liberty, to defend our very way of life, no matter the cost. 
got himself a big stiffy today. But more of this propagandist bullshit later. The campaign feels more like a point and click interactive puzzle game than a shooter. It is contrived, constraining and cocked up. The entire fucking campaign feels like a giant glitch in the matrix. The game world they created here warps reality whenever it is required to fit their little storytelling exercises. They want you to go a certain way, the bushes turn into walls. They want tension, they give you two bullets and not a single soldier has a gun or ammo. They want you to behave a certain way, then the NPCs won't drop their weapons or the weapons just despawn. They want atmosphere, they scale back your walking speed so you are forced to creep slowly and admire the fancy lighting effects they probably spent weeks discussing in meetings at the local vegan cafe or the cushioned freeform thinking zone. Most of the time the game feels like it's controlling the player. Didn't feel much sense of agency at all. The level design is farcical. Particularly in the jungle scenes, you're channeled down these very restricted routes because the bushes and undergrowth are solid obstructions. They say sneak through the jungle, but really they only let you sneak down the path at a pace they dictate. Go too fast, you get spotted. Wait a bit, then sneak down the path and you're fine. In fact, I've found numerous points in the game where it wasn't actually behaving like a game at all. There were instances where there was no problem solving skills employed. There was no interpreting the information, working out what to do, no actual game processes going on. The game segment just wanted you to do a certain thing the way they wanted it done. There was no way to tell what that thing was. So you just had to use trial and error to see how the game director thought you were supposed to do it. And most of the time, they just wanted you to move slowly. The game is fucking boring. Most of the campaign is run on rail segments where you have virtually zero agency or control punctuated by incredibly long boring cutscene segments where you have literally zero agency or control. Think I'm exaggerating? Well here is a part of the game where ironically, humorously or just because they're piss taking smarmy sneering cretins they literally put rails on the ground to show you where to run. This is dumb video game making of legendary proportions. The game is so fucking boring I started organising chores and personal shit jobs around the cutscenes. When a game is so tiresome that housework provides a fun little break from the shit game, you know you're in trouble. And no, that was not hyperbole. I would line up jobs to do during the relentless barrage of cutscenes. Wash my balaclava, order more cable ties, sharpen my knives. I was literally getting up and doing stuff whilst the cinematics droned away in the background. Vanguard also boasts one of the worst boss fights ever. The fight with Steiner is a masterclass in inconsistent game mechanics. It's so balked it doesn't follow its own rule set. You're supposed to sneak up behind the guy and use distraction but because the section is so heavily scripted, half the time he always knows where you are and chases you around like a rat and the distract skill only seems to draw him towards you. I only beat the fight by just hanging around until eventually he wandered past me and I could stab him in the back. If there'd been a cheat code, I would have used it to bypass this annoying, joyless piece of shit quest. Don't give people a stealth quest with a distract mechanic where the stealth doesn't work properly. The distract doesn't work at all and you have to try it 20 times just to work out what part is scripted so you don't die pointlessly. This is amateur hour at Activision for fuck's sake. In fact, this is a recurring theme with this game and to my review, it's the issue of non-experts. Just like a lot of this game seems like nobody knows anything about war, World War II, combat and weapons, the game also suffers because frequently there's no evidence that they even know much about video games. Games have rule sets, like movies have rule sets. You don't give the player a set of rules to play by, then change them on the fly to suit your little storytelling efforts. Especially not when the story is shit too. This is like a dysfunctional interactive fucking bedtime story where someone is trying to bore you to sleep. The problems with the poor gameplay boring segments, 
lack of agency and juvenile game construction was further amplified by the extreme heavy leaning into cinematic cutscenes. This is not a point and click adventure game, it's fucking COD. I'm famous for making overly long, tedious videos, so this following statement comes from a position of authority, from a well-known expert on boring people. This game is dreadfully boring, and I should know. The game flip-flops between sections where you have virtually no agency and sections where you have zero agency, and you just sit there and watch. It made the game experience feel more like a low-budget knockoff interactive training program. There are people sitting in fucking cubicles at Amazon warehouses doing training courses that had more fun than me. I warn you now, you will spend half the game sitting there watching shit cinematics. The music is good. But of course it's good. It's bare fucking McCreary of Battlestar Galactica fame. And as many of you know, Battlestar Galactica had one of the best soundtracks of any TV show ever. His music was so good, the soundtrack got its own fan following for fuck's sake. They'd thrown live performances just to please his adoring supporters. But epic as it was, even Bear McCreary's soundtrack was not enough to save this game. I mean, how could it? You can play Gabba Techno at your nan's funeral, but I ain't gonna turn it into a fucking rave. Sadly, however, Bear McCreary's soundtrack might end up being the only good thing about this game. Actually, that might be a little bit tight-fisted of me. They also cast the now legendary Dominic Monaghan. Naturalist. Actor. Hobbit. He did the voice of Hapstam Fury Yannick Richter. Personally, I'm always slightly suspicious of anyone called Yannick, based on my experiences of both Nazis and Ubisoft community managers, and wherever those two categories overlap. That said, despite him giving it his all, Richter, the character he played was a cartoon cutout pantomime Nazi, and not the sort of character a grown up would write. It was a sort of Nazi character you'd expect in Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, or a children's cartoon, only with slightly more killing. Obviously, Laura Bailey is in the game, because she's in every video game. She was in 15 different video games just in 2010. This is definitely worthy of further investigation, but I have started to become aware of the fact that she is literally in nearly every mainstream AAA video game, doing at least one role. Maybe it's something to do with her husband's production company or the fact that he runs the Critical Role Foundation, because let's face it, that logo just screams Illuminati. The AI is terrible, the level design is terrible, it's all terrible. And I swear, they also have spoofed bullet hits. I can't prove this, and I'm not wasting any time trying to, but there were times where I strongly suspect I was getting hit by bullets that ain't coming out of real NPCs' guns. One time I was completely behind cover, but still got struck, and I assume this was for dramatic effect. Oh, and the companion NPC's AI is even dumber than the enemies. At one point in the game, I almost got pushed into triggering the next event by a fucking bot companion, and on another occasion, I almost died because a bot pushed me out of cover. If there is a thing in this game, somehow they managed to find a way to fuck it up. I guess it's time for the big political rant. I think this game is a trap in the same way The Last of Us 2 is a trap. It's a game that pushes a very particular narrative and agenda, denigrates any characters that don't align with that agenda, and if anyone calls them out for making a shit woke story, they will no doubt be immediately accused of being everything evil in the world. And I guess the problematic politicisation of this game was summed up best by this personal experience. When I was playing the chapter Operation Tonga, I literally sighed and thought, oh great, now they're renaming World War II operations with woke sounding names. Then I found out that Operation Tonga was real, and it's not in Africa, it's in Polynesia. And there you have it. When your video game is so painfully woke that someone who is sympathetic to the untold stories of the Commonwealth and female soldiers who fought in the Second World War thinks you are making shit up. 
that's a serious credibility issue. When your CRT dripping story can't even present facts without them being treated with scepticism, then that indicates that your video game comes across like propaganda. Because this game is political propaganda. Cynical propaganda at that. Because Activision doesn't believe in these principles. It just thinks it will help its image and sales. And unfortunately, in their attempts to amp up the Call of Duty franchise's political credentials, they rewrote history, disrespected millions of people who lost their lives, and turned what should have been a historic video game into a finger-wagging lecture about inclusivity and diversity. Fuck these guys, I paid for a video game. Not a sermon. I support some of the principles espoused in this game. In principle. And I think racism, bigotry and ignorant discrimination are the habits of fucktards and people with hate in their hearts. But however noble your cause, if you prosecute that cause dishonestly, using lies, censoring history and portraying anyone not on your team as inferior, then you're just as much of a villain as any other oppressor. You just happen to be on a different side. Once you deny your audience truth and reason, you become a manipulator. You're just another trickster, trying to coerce someone into a particular way of thinking and course of action by denying them a reasonable opportunity to make an informed choice. The problem with the wokeness in Vanguard is primarily all about the intensity of the wokeness. It's the unrelenting, all-pervasive, all-encompassing nature of the politically correct design. I got what they were trying to do with Arthur Kingsley. Fuck. I have frequently said that there are many true stories about the women, Commonwealth soldiers and the US African American regiments that need to be told. Arthur Kingsley is kind of an analogue of several World War I and World War II black officers in the British military. It was also nice to see a black US Army unit in the Pacific Theatre. I have made videos where I explain how these stories should be in video games and how they would represent a more honest presentation of the history of the war. Well, I guess they say be careful what you wish for. I certainly did not predict that not only would a publisher include a lot of these stories, but they would try and include all the stories and try and warp the history of World War II in such a way so that it appears to the audience that only those stories matter. Incidentally, whilst taking lots of swipes at both the audience and any characters that fall outside of the video game's special protected groups. The problem isn't that they tried to include some of this stuff in the game. The problem is that it's all they fucking do. It's such unrelenting inclusivity and diversity that the game morphs into identity politics propaganda. In one gaming session, I played the part of a stunning and brave Russian girl who turns out to be a better physical fighter than all the men in her city and the German frontline assault infantry, and then has to rescue all the men from captivity. Then I cut to a scene where a black British officer is saving his white squad, only to transition to a scene where my Hispanic rear gunner has to save my white cracker ass from the Japanese, only to have both of us rescued by an African American army unit, who promptly berate me for my lack of music knowledge, call me white boy, question whether I've ever seen, and I quote, a negro before, make a joke that I probably assume they eat bugs and reptiles. And then, just to consolidate my status as being part of the problem, I refer to them as coloureds. Then I get told off by their officer and insulted by one of the men. Then my character basically demonstrates physical cowardice. They very literally paint me as an ignorant, prejudicial racist, by no other virtue than the fact that the character is white. You have to see the irony in that, right? There's no empathy here. There's no authenticity here. It's like being transported to the jungles of the Pacific theatre and then being rescued by a bunch of modern day angry activists who incidentally have no qualms about directing a string of racist insults towards you. This really is activists meets World War II and does not honour or do service to the real 93rd Regiment that these cartoon characters are alleged to portray. 
it's absolutely unrelenting wokery of the highest fucking order. It's not that any one particularly woke scene is conspicuously bad. The problem is that when you create an entire narrative out of woke vignettes of diversity, inclusivity and progressive statements, whilst constantly throwing in put downs on the outsider, the end result is basically a white male ignorance simulator. The cis white male characters in this game only seem to be present at all so that they can be saved or rescued by a woman or people of colour or just as routinely killed by cartoon villain Nazis and Japanese. Or just be shit leaders. In fact, it was kind of strange how the cis white male characters in this game were either flawed, shamed or killed off. I can't stress this point enough. There are plenty of parts of the story that I've wanted to see in a war game. I just didn't want all the ubiquitous World War II background removed and entirely replaced with just painfully politically correct bullshit. I fucking love salt and vinegar on my chips, but I wouldn't want to eat a packet of just salt and vinegar. The story of Vanguard is a giant serving of salt drenched in vinegar, only they forgot to cook you any fish and chips. And that's why the game feels like a salty, bitter chore to get through. Because they didn't tell the untold stories I wanted to hear, they remastered them with a voice of modern, angry, bitter progressive politics and pushed this shit pie of revisionist historical racial justice in front of me and said, swallow this white boy. And it gets even worse because shortly after all of this shit show, even the Australian guy starts calling out the British army as a bunch of colonialist fucks. And in the scene after that, they are mocking the British army and portraying the British officer class as idiotic, incompetent buffoons. It's a relentless anti-establishment treatise that rags on anyone or anything that is not part of their little special forces unit, Woke Force One. And if you think this is just me griping, well check this out. Even Kotaku thinks this game is misguided and demeans the real World War II veterans by rewriting history. Kotaku saying you've gone too far is like having Stalin telling you to chill out with the executions. Vanguard is an ideological sermon that masquerades as a game. It glorifies war, justifies war crimes against your enemy, dehumanises the other side, it disparages white soldiers, yet whilst trying to present itself as a lofty treatise on racial justice and feminism, but treats the Japanese as a sub-stereotype element of the game. This is not social justice, it's social programming. It's politics, disguised as fable. So yeah, white people bad, Japanese bad, Perversely on point considering until only recently the monsters of the internet that profess to be about racial justice considered racial hate against Asians, as well as Caucasians, completely legitimate. Do not let that slip by you. Recently people have been dredging up historic social media activity for a lot of these racial justice activists and discovering troves of Asian hate comments. Very bizarre that these same prejudices are neatly mapped onto the narrative of this game. Oh yeah, and all the fascists in the game are naturally represented with the same degree of authenticity as goons out of a cartoon. And just to hammer this point home, the narrative in this game is trying to assert its moral authority over the audience and present itself as the correct way to view the world. Yet the supposed heroes in this game beat and then murder a desk clerk in cold blood. They execute prisoners. They take another captive, douse him in gasoline and burning him alive without batting an eyelid. Sure, the characters were Nazi fucks, but Jesus Christ, cold-blooded executions as standard operating procedures. And necklacing? Really? Necklacing? I hope the symbolism of necklacing is not lost on you. Vanguard trivialises war crimes, glorifies war and portrays combat as a big lol the subtext of this story is that the enemy is subhuman and therefore does not deserve to be treated like a human. Now where have I heard this before? Oh yeah, it was the guys behind the holocaust. Coincidentally, the villains here. The game fundamentally has no integrity. 
It reminded me of Far Cry shit to a degree, in as much as they clearly did not hire any experts. Sure, they probably hired lots of experts on critical race theory, activism, intersectional feminism, hipsters, and story writers with their pronouns tattooed on their fucking foreheads. But when making a World War II combat game, it's apparently a good idea to hire someone who knows at least half a fuck about war and history. The game is shockingly bad when it comes to making sense. You see a guy using a flamethrower casually on a dude four foot in front of him without a care in the world, standing out in the open, out of cover. You see comedy Nazis that talk like something out of a sub-Indiana Jones movie. You see clunky old two-seater attack planes out dogfighting Japanese Zeros veteran pilots. What the actual fuck was that about? Setting aside all the continuous and ubiquitous political preachings in this game, let us not forget the single biggest message in the plot. World War II was just a warm-up. It was just the first stage of the Nazi plan to inject and spread fascism into the world. They're still out there, they still walk amongst us and must be rooted out like rats. The hunt for the Nazis never ends. This is the sort of crackpot shit I read on Twitter today. This notion that the enemies are hiding everywhere. Fascists need to be hunted down. The fight against the fascist enemy within is never ending. This is Propaganda 101. In the previous Call of Duty game, Black Ops Cold War, the Soviet defector Yuri Bezmenev was featured in the trailer, discussing amongst other things the Soviet long-term strategy for disintegrating Western values using the techniques referred to as active measures. Active measures uses such techniques as disinformation, propaganda, deception, sabotage, destabilization, subversion, espionage. Oh, the fucking irony that a franchise that was referencing active measures in its previous game is now responsible for a perfect cultural example of how that would theoretically manifest in the entertainment industry. And I'm only saying theoretically to be polite. I don't think they made this game this way with any deliberate intent to further this agenda. I think they did it out of selfishness because they were avoiding backlash because they thought playing the woke card would service their own interests. Not that it matters why they did it. The issue is that they did do it. They told you about active measures and then practically in the next breath produced the perfect example of a video game bending the knee, bending to social pressure and bending to the will of gatekeeping activist journalists. Just like someone smashing a shot window to impress the SS observers or someone who hurls abuse at someone during a Maoist struggle session. Oops, wrong clip. The point is not that they sincerely believe this shit that they're peddling, it's the fact they are contributing to the societal atmosphere where everyone feels like they must give in to the pressure, that they must acquiesce, because everyone else is giving in to this propagandist bullshit. The disaster is coming closer and closer. The danger is real. I'm not going to lie. I try and avoid using words like woke as a lazy go-to word to describe the politics in video games. But I probably used it more times in this video than I have all year. What the fuck am I supposed to do? I can't spend five minutes trying to qualify a more precise description every time this game gets woke. Because it's woke to its very core. It's a finely crafted monument to wokeness. I think it's very important when discussing war to remember a few lessons that were hard earned. We have the Geneva Convention for a reason. You can't just deny your enemy humanity and basic fair treatment by the sole virtue of them being your enemy. Similarly, behind nearly all societal atrocities is the foundation work of dehumanising your enemy. We live in strange and violent times and I frankly think it's despicable and hypocritical to make a game that preaches about feminism and racial justice while simultaneously glorifying war, being racist and burning your prisoners alive. There is 
no deep meaning in this story, it's really just a British 1940s propaganda war movie where the traditional two-dimensional patriotic characters have been swapped out for one-dimensional woke characters. I'm surprised this game didn't ship with a hammer and sickle and a Black Lives Matter sticker slapped on the front. Instead of telling people to hate the Germans and the Japanese, it's hate cis white men, the fascists, the Nazis, actually, and the Japanese, and under all the propaganda, it's a shit game, made on the cheap. Call of Duty Vanguard is not merely rewriting history to service a modern political critical race theory agenda, it's the woke equivalent of Mein Kampf for gamers. Imagine Aesop's Fables, rewritten by a trained Marxist. Yeah, she'll do. Her words, not mine. We uh, are trained Marxists. I feel like I have a front row seat at the death of a franchise. This is Call of Duty's Battlefield Vagina moment. They traded what little integrity they had left for a ticket on the Identity Politics Express. Because they assume the future is going to be even more nuts than the social media witch burnings we have right now. I'm not so sure that's going to be the case. It honestly occurred to me that Activision deliberately wrote off Call of Duty this year. Not kidding. The last year has seen people cancel just for making sense or citing facts. Businesses burnt down for not taking the knee hard enough. There has been a pandemic of wokeness, critical race theory and intersectional feminism and in the middle of this progressive shitstorm Activision gets sucked into a scandal about accusations of sexism, abuse in the workplace and operating a five-star date rape drinking den hotel suite at video game events. Activision has a perception problem in the middle of a propaganda war. I think they might have just decided to make this game as woke as humanly possible as some kind of PR stunt, knowing full well it would fall flat on its ass, and decided the best way to reduce the financial hit was just to put as little effort into it as possible, and then maybe target the whales later in the year with the microtransactions. Maybe they also know that the gatekeepers in the propaganda ministry of mainstream video game journalism will give them some positive reviews just because they played the identity politics card. Because those fucks would give a 10 out of 10 rating to a snuff movie if it was progressive and socialist enough. The game's a mess. The political propaganda in it is horrible. Zombies is a low effort asset flip. Call of Duty Vanguard is cynical junk. Call of Duty Vanguard demonstrates comprehensive and far-reaching levels of failure. It fails at being a story, and fails even harder at being a video game. The game frequently berates the player character and sometimes actually treats you like an ignorant racist. It's a video game that insults the player's character and intelligence. Vanguard's syphilitic failure permeates every pore of this game. Call of Duty Vanguard is the video game equivalent of a school classroom, where they make all the white kids sit at one side and tell them they're the oppressors who are responsible for all the injustice in the world. Vanguard is a shit game on every conceivable level of analysis and fails at everything it attempts. It has therefore rightly earned its place in the pantheon of terribly shit video games, standing proudly between a torn down statue of Fallout 70 fuck and a urine stained statue of Battlefield Vagina. And it is highly likely this will be the only award the game ever wins outside of worst video games of 2021. Or whatever deviant awards I invent for it in this year's award ceremony. Activision and Sledgehammer, congratulations. You have failed. But for now, good luck and happy hunting. <laughs>